Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here with Sarah Mello and her gorgeous artwork. And Sarah's going to tell us a little something about it. I'm so excited to introduce you to Miss Gladys. Love this title. Yay! <laughs> um, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how Miss Gladys got born. So um, in addition to painting, I also do monoprint and jelly printing. And when you're doing printmaking, you need to clean your brayer a lot. And so I keep a nice sheet of paper where I'm cleaning my brayers and um, sometimes my knives. And every once in a while, when you're doing printmaking, there's a lot of thinking you have to do about layers and it's brain work. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I put it all aside and I just sort of stare into the brayer sheet and see if the <laughs> image emerges and then I flush that out. So this is how Gladys first got born. This is this was an old boy or sheet, and then I started to see an image, and I started to build her in there. And at the time, I thought she had a dog, but as she started to um, decide to come to life, I think she got rid of that dog. It might be inside of her. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> and um, I grew up in Baltimore City, and I think that that's where Gladys lives. And if you know anything about Baltimore, you know that one of the things they're famous for are the painted screen windows. Yeah. This, this back is a little bit of a nod to the painted screens that I grew up around, and another thing that is famous there, I think they do it in Philly too, they make these planters out of recycled tires. Yeah. So um, most often you would find fake flowers in those. I think Gladys is giving, a, she's probably taking um, the chance to make a real plant, a live plant girl. But yeah, she, she's known in her neighborhood for for her live <laughs> as her opposed live to fake. Plants, yes. So that's what I wanted to tell you about, Miss Gladys. I love this piece. Yeah, I, well... Let's face it, anything with a name like Miss Gladys, you're going to get excited about. And on top of that, the colors in this are so rich. And uh, the detail that you've gone into um, about her environment is also wonderful. But let's start with the color. Can you tell us a little bit of how you made these decisions? Mm, I, I do tend to work pretty intuitively with color. I was thinking about Baltimore, and I just remember Baltimore being <laughs> so I remember hot bricks, and you were never cool enough. And I think there's just a lot of hot, vibrant colors. I, I think I just tend to gravitate towards hot tropical colors anyway. Well, and the detail in this is so nice, the way you've juxtapositioned the line-making marks with the um, whatever brush or tool that you use to do the painting. Mm -hmm. um, it's very nice how this simultaneously could be... a a drawing, but you've integrated this bold, bright color that interacts really well with the lines and things like that. When I was in art school, they were always trying to tell me, is this a painting or is it a drawing? And I'd say, mm -hmm. and I think you see, <laughs> <laughs> there's elements of painting, there's elements of drawing, there's actually um, printmaking in there as well, yeah. at least the brick texture. Right? It's a true mixed printed. media. There's some really printing in there as well. I really just like to do yeah, that. I always thought that there was I got a sense that there were collage. There's collage. It looks like collage. That's that um, was also probably brushwork and printmaking. But it almost looks like it was cut out of the flower magazine. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it really is fantastic the way that it comes together. Because, for example, these pieces actually do what flowers do. They seem to sit on top of their greenery mm -hmm. and, and stand out and call to us. And we get that sense. And uh, Miss Gladys is being blocked by this plant. I like how you've also used color density in this to like, uh, so like the bricks, they are, you've used uh, more of a wash to more vibrant colors. And once you get to the foreground, things are fully flushed and vibrant, um, which really makes it, brings it forward. It adds a nice dimension. I'm sorry, mom, I interrupted you. Did you have a question? Yeah, I did, but now, I, now you have <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. yeah, no, um, what she said. Yeah. No, no, but when, for example, you you um, look at what you're doing with the color and um, how you're treating the edges of these each one of these colors, there are defined edges and then there are edges that are softer. Mm -hmm. um, so particularly as a person who draws, you go and you concentrate on line. Can you talk a little bit about how you're talking about line and edges and surfaces to make things three dimensional and things. And this is so much in front of this. Mm -hmm. um, it feels a lot like the way I approach the multi levels that you have to go into printmaking. So I think that that feels 
that makes more sense to me probably <laughs> than I'm putting it together. And I because when you make a print, you're thinking about what do I have to print first so that it appears yeah. you know, print in reverse. So you, so that it, so it appears in the back. So that feels very much sort of like I would approach a print. Here's the background, and then this class is going to be in front, so she needs to be on top. Um, and well, do you feel that um, because of how how you have to approach materials in order to make these layers. Uh, watercolorists always talk about saving their whites. Uh, uh, do you find yourself that you're like, oh, uh, because I'm using pigment, I can I don't have to save my whites. I can put them on last. <laughs> Sorry, watercolors. <laughs> I can always put them on later. You know, it's I'm thinking about this. I got in trouble for using white paint in art school one time. I can I remember a teacher being furious and saying, no one told you to use white. I'm thinking, huh. <laughs> so have all the whites that she wants. I know. And which kind of white is it? Is it warm white or a cool white? Exactly. And you see lots of different kinds of whites. Yes, uh, that was exactly what I was going yeah. to point out. That there, that you um, will take a color and you'll vary it to what its needs are. Because it's funny that this orange stripe that's on the pink yeah. is probably the same color as what you're using there or there, okay. and yet each one takes on its own personality yeah. because of how you've contained it and where you've placed it. Mm -hmm. So do you, we just talked to an artist about uh, Hans Hoffman and push-pull. Uh, do you think, uh, as you're doing this, about push-pull and color? I probably think about it as it's unfolding or as a problem gets created <laughs> <laughs> more, than, more than that. And also what happens when you stick, I guess that's what he's talking about, when you put a color next to another color. So these might be the same, but put that on hot pink and it's suddenly very yeah. different. Yeah, that reminds me of Wolf Kahn. I mean, some of the crazy things he did with color in these landscapes, yeah. and they look perfectly natural, and yet, you know, it just really shoots the vibrancy yeah. out. Yeah. Well, and we're speaking of color right now, but I also think one of the things that I find interesting in your work overall is that you're not afraid of color, but you're also not afraid of monochromatics. Mm -hmm. And you actually mix your grays and blacks and whites to great effect in your pieces. Can you talk a little bit about how you, like, how you determine like, I don't even know if that gray is really gray, or is it a series of colors meeting together <laughs> that actually makes it look gray? Can you talk about how you kind of think about using whites and grays and versus colors and things like that? Uh, it's something I'm trying to do more because I really love vibrant color, and I keep thinking I really should do more monochromatic works. So it's funny to hear you talk about it now. Um, because every time I start in gray, then I really want my, I miss my black yeah. colors. So, <laughs> and yeah, so I don't think that I actually mix gray as much as I see. There's pink and there's blue yeah. and there's green back there because I really want them. But they're, you know. <laughs> I love it. Like, I, yeah. I love that that's the way that you're creating it because the instinct when, like, you're painting a building that probably does have brick elements and gray elements and areas in shadow and areas in dark is, I think, for a lot of people to go, especially pedestrian people like me, to be like, oh, well, that's gray. But your grays are never just gray. They're mm -hmm. always very nuanced, and yet you're not afraid of monochromatic. I think because they emerge out of a brayer sheet, too, where oh. the colors have been so... Not down, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the colors get built up by being layered on top of each other yeah, that's instead true. of one pure color. So mm -hmm. I think that that probably has... Um, I didn't think about that, but that probably has influenced... Here's another gray that's not really a gray. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, I'm teaching myself how to layer in a color, I suppose, and just right. recognize that was happening. So, and Sarah also does a series of, like, you 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 do, like, little videos and things like that, mm -hmm. which I find fascinating. So, uh, you're a good follow on Instagram. <laughs> yes, yeah. so and and what, what do they need to follow? Oh, gosh, it's... Uh, at the other sister at, and at Sarah Mello 77, I think. That's the Facebook one. Sarah Mello seventy seven is the Facebook, or you can look. I think that's you can just look it up. So, um, oh, you know what? I think on I think on Instagram it's just at the other sister. Yes, it might be underscore artist on Instagram. Yes, it might be. But as soon as you, you're the only the other sister. Ah, that's good. So and also other sister that also <laughs> we sisters are so weird that way. Um, Please but also we'll what, link to it. So. Yeah, great. And I would love to follow the videos because I don't make the. If you really want to learn a precise process, they're brilliant artists making really good processes. I um, don't want people to be afraid to try things, so mm -hmm. all my mistakes are in there so that you can see. See, I don't find that <laughs> refreshing. See, when it goes I, wrong. <laughs> I would have said that you get to watch you experiment in real time, which I Absolutely. think is one of the things I like. Like, yeah. is that I'm getting to watch you experiment and try different things as you take on this new skill. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, and, right. and you can really see how skillful this is. Your ability to draw, your your ability to use a, fi a figure fully fleshed and give us a mood. And we know, it's like we know who this person is. Yeah. Um, I believe when I told you you were accepting to the show, I said, Miss Gladys is invited to the party. Yes, she got invited to the party. That's right, and we could not be happier, because I bet she's a great guest. She's got a few friends in some other shows around town, but hopefully we'll get them all together for a party <laughs> soon. <laughs> that, that'll be wonderful. So, but in the meantime, you can visit Miss Gladys here, Pal Lane. Absolutely. And what are the new states? Uh, I was hoping you were going to get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. She's not a calendar person. Uh, please come see Miss Gladys, Sarah's beautiful work. Uh, from now through May 14th. Absolutely. So, thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.